Let us pray. Father God, we thank you so much today just for the opportunity to come before you. I pray, Lord, that as you're using me, uh, your conduit, to bring forth the word today, I, bring, I pray that the word will be in season. I, I pray that it'll be a word that will be life shaken and life altering. And I pray that those are here today, have them to have an ear to hear and a heart to receive. And if this word is a blessing to them, Father, have them to apply it real quick and real good. So Father, we praise you. We give you all the glory and honor. In your name we pray, amen and praise God. Amen, amen. So the title of my message today is A Dry Well Benefits No One. A Dry Well Benefits No One. And I got to make it quick, so if you can please start my clock, because I don't want to hold you long. What is a well? A well is a pool fed by a string or a spring. It's a source from which something may be drawn as needed. So when we think about a well, we think of going to a well outside and taking what they call a ladle and drop that ladle into the well and pull up water, correct? Correct? All right, now go with me now. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta lay it out and then we're gonna go in. So I wanna describe the function of a well, mostly used for drinking the water. Well uses groundwater as its source of water. And groundwater exists in the spaces and cracks and fractures in the underground soil and rock formations known as an aquifer. An aquifer is the part of the soil and rock that is saturated with water and can yield water to a well. How much water is available depends on the type of soil and rock formations such as limestone can give large quantity of ground water, while others like shell and, and hard rock can yield small amounts of water. Now the groundwater, or also known as the water table, is the top of the water saturated zone. Now the water table level is usually maintained, and get this, it's usually maintained by rain water. Someone say rain water. Where does rain water come from? Up above. Okay, somebody's following me. The water table level is usually maintained by rainwater that seeps into the ground. And as it soaks into the ground, the water flows toward a discharge point, typically nearby spring or a stream. An average amount of 65% of all stream and waters in Pennsylvania comes from groundwater. This is known as base flow base flow okay so i want to skip over a little bit here so now based on what i said to you we know that the well is supplied mostly by rain water correct no rain Woo, okay let the church we, we wait now come on no rain no water okay so how does a well go dry a well works by inserting a pump inside of a drilled hole to bring water up and into the house through a pipe. If there is no groundwater available to enter the pump, it sucks air into inside of the water. And when the tap is turned on or the pipe is turned on and there's no water in the well, it will pull up discolored murky brown water and it's also full of mud. So when you turn the pipe on to get water from a well, if there's no water in it, it's gonna yield rocks, mud, dirt, and it serves no purpose. What's the reason for going into the well is to get no water, no well, no water. A dry well benefits no one. So we go back to Judges, let's talk about Samson for a minute. See, Samson lost the power of God in his life and he didn't even know it. 
He didn't know it. He didn't know it. When you go back to verse 20, he says, but he did not know that the Lord had departed from him. If you see the word departed, what does departed mean? It means to turn off, to turn away, to not be there. Why did God turn aside or turn off Samson? God removed his hand of blessings and strength from Samson, and he didn't miss it. Why? Because he was lulled to sleep. He was lulled to sleep. See, that's a, a frightening thought. Can you imagine how Samson felt that, that when the war started and he got up thinking he was just as strong as he used to be? And when he went to fight, he had no strength because his hair was gone. He left himself open and vulnerable to be lulled to sleep. When you study his life, see, Samson had his strength when he was a kid, when he was a child. That's when that strength was poured into him. So it was already inside of him as a child. And he already knew what the need was for his life. God needed him to do a couple of things. Number one, to kill 1,000 men with the jawbone of a donkey. I'm not going to say what the Bible says. I'm going to say donkey for the sake of empowerment. Word church. He killed a thousand men with the jawbone of a donkey. He killed a lion with his bare hands. He slaughtered 30 Philistines who plotted to kill him. The word was out. God's hand of blessings was on Samson's life. Oh, but due to his disobedience, God turned those blessings off. Samson lost the spiritual power and God turned away from him because of his disobedience. How did this happen to Samson? How does this happen to us? We are Samsons. God has put things on the inside of us from birth. We have things inside of us from the heavens. See, that's the gifts that we came here before conception. Much like Samson, we had a gift or we have gifts inside of us. But what caused him to lose the spiritual power? Verses 19 says, then he lulled, she lulled him. We know who she is. She lulled him to sleep on his knees and called for a man and shaved his head all of his locks off his head. And then what did she do? She began to torment him and strength left. He was tormented and strength left. Samson's strength was dependent upon his obedience to God. And when Samson compromised the word, he lost his strength. He lost it. He lost his strength when he compromised, when he allowed himself to be lulled to sleep by Delilah. Don't tell folks about your business. Your power is in your hair. Hold that secret within. But allow circumstances to become disobedient. Do we have circumstances that we've allowed ourselves to be disobedient in? Where are we losing our power? Circumstances, disappointments, sickness, people, people. Where are we losing our power? A dry well benefits no one. When it was time for Samson to stand up and to defend the people, when God reached down into his well to try to pull back a strength that he put in him at the time of birth because of his disobedience, he drew back mud and drew back dirt and drew back muddy waters because Samson was out of order. A dry well 
benefits no one. God has need of us. We have things to do in the earth, but we do not have time to be lulled to sleep by circumstances. Oh, well, I don't have money to put, in, put gas in my car uh, to, 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 go, uh, to go to church, call somebody. You know, I, I don't feel like witnessing today. My throat hurt, cough drops. Circumstances. God has need of us. This is a well that should be overflowing with living waters. And when he comes to us and has need of us, and when he dips that ladle down into our well, he needs to pick up something. If you are a worship leader, and it's time for you to come and lead in worship. Well, when it's time for you to come and lead in worship, when Jesus, when God takes that ladder and come, he needs to come down pure worship. He needs to be able to get down into that gift and you make a joyful noise unto the Lord. If I need somebody playing over here, then God needs to be able to get down into Mike's gift and pull that gift out when it's needed. We have to be in place. We don't look this way just to be looking this way. You don't have this money in your account just to have this money in your account. You don't drive a Range Rover just to drive a Range Rover and look good. Although you do look good in a Range Rover. <laughs> However, <laughs> that's not the purpose. We are here to activate what has been put in here. And we have no time to allow circumstances, disappointments, sicknesses, and folk to disrupt what God has in us. So when he takes that ladder and gets down in here, I don't want him pulling up mucks and, and rocks. It doesn't benefit God. When, he, when it's time when he needs us, we got to be ready. When he needs us, we must be on post. Uh, <laughs> Trina. Trina sat up here today and talked about all that stuff she had to get out of her. She had to get that stuff out. Why? Because when God had need of her today, had she carried that, that um, unforgiveness in her heart for this man, she couldn't righteously get up here and minister to us. And it wouldn't have been receptive. She would have been in condemnation and, and all kinds of stuff because she couldn't be what you say, free and open and honest. God dipped down into Katrina. Hey, I need you today. Yeah. Well, are you ready? Let me dip down and see what I got going on in here. Yes. Amen. Are you ready? Yeah. We've got to be in place. And there are things in here that God needs of us. And when he comes to us, we've got to move. We've got to move. I will use an example, and I was just so grateful. The song Grateful was amazing. And I remember when my father passed. I'm the oldest of two brothers. So everybody comes to me for everything. And so I knew, being a daddy's girl, that when he passed, I would have to do the funeral. I would have to do that. So that time came for me. Now either I was gonna be broke, busted, and disgusted, upset, ag agitated, anxiety, all this, and not be ready to do that funeral, or be ready, be posted up, and go with what God has told me to do, reach into a place that has a peace that surpasses all understanding. I had to be ready for that day. Who wants to be ready for that day to do your own father's funeral? Nobody. But God had need of me, why? Because I had to minister to my family. So when he took that letter down and said, hey daughter, I need you. I know it's rough, but you got it. I need what's in there. I need it. You ready? Bet. I'm good. Let's go. Let's go. So there are times that we may not like, may not feel comfortable with, but we must be ready. And excuses are not an option. It's not an option. 
It's not an option. Hebrews 10 and 39 says this, but we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. What does perdition mean? Mm -hmm. Okay, get your pens and paper out. <laughs> perdition means stuff. Perdition means disappointment. Everything I just named him, that's perdition. We don't draw back to that because of who we're connected to. Who made us? See, perdition will cause fear. Perdition will cause um, disappointment. Perdition will cause you to slow up and second guess your movements. Perdition is anything that contradicts God. Stuff that you're going through, hurts and disappointments, that's perdition. But see, the Bible says that we are not of them who draw back unto perdition. Now, let's go back to this. We are not of them who do that. Now, what does that mean? That means that there are people who do. But it also means that we're not of them. We're not of them. Minister Yvonne just did the invitation. So that means that everybody in here is a part of a royal priesthood and a holy nation. That means that we are part of God's kingdom. That also means that we are not of them who draw back. No, I better not say that word. Who are wimps in the kingdom, weak, running scared because of some opposition. Because of something that came up to you and made you mad. Oh, now I got to go think about this. No, no, no. We don't draw back to perdition. Because of what we have in our hands. We have on the whole armor of God. We are not Samson's. We cannot be lulled to sleep by perdition. We do not draw back like them, those who don't know God. We got to look different. You lost your job, you lost your job. You saved, you unsaved. Y'all need to be crying together. Y'all need to be taking anxiety pills together. No, that's not what we do. God is a supplier. He's gonna supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory. We become a, a dry well when the issues that surround us become bigger than our faith in God. If you see, all you see are your situations and your lack and you can't see God, your well is dry. Your well is dry. We've got to keep our wells full. That occurs when the water source to our well, which is God, slows up, which we cut off our supply by worrying, lack of prayer, distrust, and nobody wants to admit this, poor choices. Poor choices. We can make some bad choices sometime, y'all. Really can. But that slows up the water supply of God, especially that lack of prayer. Your prayer is here. That's how God can download that water supply into you. See, one thing about a dry well, when you go into the well and it's empty, you pull up the ladder, you're doing something. Same thing like tea, same thing as a rose. The only way you can get true fragrance and flavor of a tea bag is when it's put in what? Hot water. There's a difference. The only way you can get true fragrance of a rose is you have to put a little what on it? Pressure. You got to crush it. You got to crush it. When Samson lost his power, he was no good to anyone who needed him, including God. Or even that chick he was with. <laughs> she needed him too until she got what she wanted. 
Okay, somebody write that one down. All right. When we lose our faith, hope, strength, we misplace our trust and we are no good to anybody. And when our wells are dry and missing water, we benefit nobody. We benefit nobody. I'll use Mrs. V. She asked me to come and speak at an event last night. Well, if my, my well was dry and I didn't have anything on the inside of me, I wouldn't be able to say, okay, yeah, I'll go. It would sound like something. Sis, you know, I got a little things going on. I, I ain't going to be able to do it. Be at home Netflixing. <laughs> because I wouldn't have been ready when she called. When she called. We are purposed to be filled with the power of God so we can benefit and serve others. We can't sing well just to sing to ourselves. We sing to benefit and serve others. Every gift that we have is to serve others. If you know how to cook, it's to serve somebody else. If you know how to decorate an interior design, it's to serve somebody else. If you're good with numbers and you can crunch numbers, it's for somebody else. It's for somebody else. So if we are sitting on it and we're not pushing it out, we benefit no one. We are a dry well and we cannot be afraid of that. Somebody said earlier, I think it was probably yesterday, we're living in interesting times. Minister Chiquita said that Wednesday. We're living in interesting times. So either we're going to be the change we want to see or we're going to talk about the change. That's why we're all here, Christians, these folk, these kingdom folk, everybody in here saved. So every gift you have is to serve the kingdom. God, I can't say it enough, God has need of us. He truly needs us. It's not just up to the police department. It's not just up to a probation office. It's up, we have a job to do. And we can't be riddled with stuff that's going on with us that cuts off our hair and takes our power. It's bigger than you. It's bigger than you. I have a tendency sometimes if I'm a little stressed, if I get real stressed, I'll go and get quiet. Won't say too much. Barely even utter a prayer. Got that thing going like this in my head. Dry well, serving no purpose, sitting over in the corner thinking. Thinking about what? What is you thinking about, Clarissa? Over and over and wasting time. When the only thing I got to do instead of going here, I can go here. When I go here, all that, I forget about that. I can't think about here and here at the same time. I cannot. So Matthew 6 and 33 says this, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Perspective. Push through. I tell my kids sometimes, you got to push through till you get through. Sometimes you don't feel like looking up, you know, you just barely, just kind of winking and looking up there, but he's there for us. We've got to look to the hills which cometh our help so that we can make sure that our well continue to flow. It's got to flow, it's got to flow, it's got to flow. When he takes the, the ladder, that's God. When God takes that ladder, he takes that ladder and he wants to pull up faithfulness and eagerness. When, he, when, it's, when it's time, we don't have to be one if that's God. Well, I don't know if I'm, but they don't have time for that. We're Christians. We know when God says he needs us and we should know his voice by now. We don't need to be, well, I don't know if that was God or not. Hey, you're a little dry. It's time to know the voice of God because we don't have the time to be thinking and feeling. As I, I heard my husband's friend say, step it and fetch it. You're wasting time. Know it's his voice. And when he calls of us, we're faithful and we're eager. All right, God, you know, let's go. Put me in, coach. I used to play basketball. Put me in, coach. I rolled the sideline sometime, but <laughs> I was second string, but I was a good second string. 
So he takes that ladder. He wants to get faithfulness and eagerness. Number two, he wants to pull up gifts and talents. Some of us can sing, but we're afraid to open our mouths. Some of us are speakers, but we're afraid to speak. Some of us are painters and artists, and we have all this stuff in our room, all this stuff in our basement, and afraid to put it out there. When he reaches down, he wants to pull up those gifts and talents, listen to this, because he gave it to you in the first place. So now, is it truly ours to have? Or is it ours to be good stewards of so when he has need of it, we can give it back to him? Perspective. Number three, and we'll go through these a little fast now because my time is winding up. Number three, he wants to pull up readiness to serve and a willingness to win souls. We got to be ready. James 5, 19 and 20 says this, brethren, if anyone among you wanders from the truth, and someone turns him back, let him know that he who turns a sinner from the error of his way will save a soul from death and cover a multitude of sin. You know why? It's a reasonable service. So what we're here to do. That's why God made us <laughs> to serve, to help people, get folks saved. When we were in South Africa, 50 plus people got saved in one day. That's what God is calling us to do. It's our reasonable service. So when he takes that ladder and reaches down on our well, we need to have readiness to serve and ability to win souls. So the days of saying, well, I don't know how to minister to folks. I don't do evangelism. Okay. You talk to people you don't know, don't you? You'll sit down, we wait in the waiting room, folks to start a conversation. Easy to do. Easy. Number four, he will pull up a cup of submission. We got to be ready to submit. Some of us don't like that word submit in the natural. Submit, I don't submit to nobody. Oh, you don't tell me what to do. Oh, I'm good and grown. No. <laughs> God needs us to submit to him because he has some place to take us. Submission is also coupled with trust. Where is your trust? Where is it? Do you, do you have it in God or do you have it in yourself? Right? If you're having issues with submission, figure out where that trust is. Figure out where the trust is. Hebrews 13 and 17 says this, Let them do so with joy and not with grief, for that would be unprofitable for you. We've got to submit with joy. And sometimes we may not understand where the leader is taking us. We may not understand those, those objectives and that mission, but we're under the leadership. And when you submit yourself under leadership, you got to trust the God in the leader. We're about to celebrate 10 years here at NWC. Let's give God a hand. I believe that Pastor Sean is about to take us some places that we know not of and may even question how we're getting there. That's natural, that's normal. But if we're gonna do Bible, when it's time for us to go, and God reaches down and says, hey, uh, Linda, I need to pull some submission out of you because I'm about to take Pastor Sean somewhere, so I need you to submit to this. So I'm ready, I need to pull that out. We need to be ready and obey those who rule over us. And do it what? Cheerfully. Somebody say cheerfully. 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 Amen. Okay, number five. He wants to pull up respect. He wants to pull up respect. Sometimes we don't respect folk because we don't like them. <laughs> it's hard to respect folk you don't like. But when God reaches down and he needs to pull that out, it needs to be in here and we need to be ready. Because so, so what if you don't like the person? They may not like you. They don't have anything to do with respect. It has nothing to do with respect. So Romans 12 and 10 says this, be devoted to one another in love, honor one another above yourselves. Simple. So we got to put our flesh beside us, right? Because we don't want disrespect, 
dishonor, being ruled in the spirit of Delilah to snatch our spiritual power. See, it comes in various ways. That's why we have to be watchful and what? Vigilant. Watchful and vigilant. See, we may think, well, I don't like that person. No, she don't know. Oh, I ain't going to worry about it. Oh, that's a little imp waiting to snatch the rug out from under you. Why? Because when God reaches down to need to respect, because he needs you to honor somebody and love them, you're not ready. First Peter 2 and 17, show proper respect to everyone. Love the family of believers, fear God, and honor, and honor the emperor. Why is God always saying, you know, respect and love? Because it's hard. That's not easy. Especially if folk walk up on you. <laughs> Minister Yvonne, we all have an old zip code we go back to. And I've traveled back a couple of times, but God is still good. Okay? It's pressure out there, but God is saying we have the ability to do it. We do. We do. And number three, James 2, 8, and 9, if you really keep the royal law found in Scripture, love your neighbor as yourself, then you're doing right. You're going to do right. Love them the way you want to be loved, respected, and honored. If you keep that, then it'll be easy to do. But if you forget that, it ain't going to happen. It ain't going to happen. So how can you serve people and not like them? How can you serve people and not love them? How can you righteously serve people and not honor them? We are called to each other. So when he dips into us and says, hey, I really need you to love on sister so-and-so, I know she cussed you out last week, but she needs you right now. (laughs) When he dips in, what is he pulling out? Love or mud and rocks and muddy water. What is he pulling out? Number six, when he pulls in, he needs to pull out prayer. Guys, we need to be praying. We need to be praying and needs to be praying without ceasing. Now, it's not, and it's not hard to do. Get up in the morning, put your 15 minutes to the side, honor him, thank him, appreciate him, love on him. Thank him for everything that he's done. Just a simple conversation with God. That will keep, that'll put water in your well right there. It will. It will. It'll put water in your well right there. And number seven, I think that may be my last one. Number seven, commitment. He needs to be able to reach down and pull out some commitment. Are you committed? Are you committed? When it gets rough, are you leaving? Are you going to tuck tail and run, or are you committed? Stick and stay. When God called me to South Africa, because he did in a dream, I told God years ago, I don't do third world now, Lord. <laughs> we have enough over here that I can serve. You know, we got folks that need to be saved. We got hungry people out with everything that third world got we have here. But see, I knew better. And I said, well, Lord, now, if you do want me to go, I'll go, Bianca. I'll go. However, I do need a burning bush in order to solidify. You know what I mean? I think if he want me to go, he's going to give me that. (laughs) He gave me a dream about South Africa. It was very distinct. Two days before I was asked to go. So that was my burning bush. Now, had I not had that, I would have said, I pray y'all strengthen the Lord and I hope y'all do well over there. That would have been my response. But see, when God reached out to me, I had to be ready and committed. And I'm going to be honest with you, 15 hours in the air was not my, okay. I don't care if it was Delta. That was 15 hours across a whole bunch of water. So in my mind, (laughs) I was like, okay. But see, I already told God, all right. He gave me the burning bush, everything I asked for. So I had to commit. 
Even down to the wire, I was trying to find reasons for not going. I was like, <clears throat> do I have a cold? <clears throat> nope, that ain't gonna work. <laughs> trying to find reasons. But I knew what I told God, see. So then he said, okay, it's time. I need to reach down into Minister Clarissa and pull up some commitment. Are you committed to travel across seas? Because I have work for you to do over there and people need you. Are you committed to do that? Now I'm reaching down, what am I gonna pull up? He pulled up a little fear, I ain't gonna lie. But I committed. I committed and I'm so glad for it. I have a couple of more scriptures and then I will go ahead and wrap up because I do want to be asked back. Thank you, Pastor Sean. Okay. Uh, a cup of patience and understanding. We can be very short with each other, very impatient and not understand. Sometimes we may misunderstand someone's words or their behavior. Someone may walk down the hall and you're like, oh. You know, uh, so-and-so didn't even speak to me. Gilda walked right by me, girl, and she ain't say a word. Mm. You know what? I knew she wasn't saved anyway. I always getting up there praying, and she always talk about she loved the Lord and can't even speak. Mm, okay. But you know what? What we didn't think about, I wonder how her day is going. I hope everything is okay with her. I hope, you know, I'm going to ask her and say, hey, Gilda, you walked by. Is everything okay? Y'all see how that how that work? So we got to get out of here in ourselves. We have, to get, we have to get some understanding. When God goes down here, he needs to pull out understanding. Look at another way. Even if somebody goes off on you, I say, all right, hold up now, sis. Hey, I ain't doing nothing to you. You good? Then you can talk about it. Patience and understanding. Philippians 2 and 4, not looking at your own interest, but each of you to the interest of the other. That's Bible. Not, <laughs> this Bible. I'm so glad I got the Bible. <laughs> Y'all, she's talking so wrong. Nope, this Bible. This Bible. Not looking to your own interest, but to each of the interests of another. We've got to be here for each other. Can't say it enough. Can't say it enough. We have to, y'all. And there's some, I'm, you won't believe this, but I am an introverted person. But I'm trained and raised to be extroverted. Okay? So I thrive well by myself. But I can't stay in that. Not for me to be a minister. Who am I going to minister to? Introverted. The walls, get them saved. No. I have to get out of that and open up. That's where the patience comes in. That's where the understanding comes in. Getting outside of yourself. You may not feel like talking to people, but what if people need you? Right? You may not feel like looking at your bank account and see that negative in there, but guess what? You're going to have to look at it. You have to. You have to. And then giving people reasonable doubt. And I'm going to stop right here. Give them the benefit of the doubt. That's where the love comes in, y'all. We got to give people the benefit of the doubt. We have to. What if they missed it? We perfect, right? Everybody perfect, right? I'm just, no? Are we all? No, okay. Y'all ain't talking right there. Y'all got quiet. <laughs> First Corinthians 15 and 58 says this. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. There's a lot of encouragement here. A lot of encouragement. And if God is taking the ladle to dip it down into our well, guess what? He already knows it's there. It's there. God is intelligent. He is all-knowing, all-being everywhere. So why would he dip into something that's not there? So he knows it's there. We just have to know it's there. 
We do. He can reach down and get understanding. He can reach down and get compassion. He can reach down and get commitment. He can reach down and get blessings. He can reach in here and get everything he needs. We just have to know that we're the vessels that have it. Put ourselves in a position. If you're dry, get you some water. What happens when you're dehydrated? You go where? To the hospital and they give you some fluid. Because you're dehydrated. We need to link up with God right here. Put that out of spiritual IV in your veins and let it run. Let it run. We are all here. Vessels, we are all here as wells. And I speak that the overflow of water oozes out of us. If we have so much, it just comes out our pores. When somebody walks by us, they can just feel the anointing. That you just have so much hydration on you. You walk in the rooms and change the rooms. Why? Because you're filled. Your well is overflowing. Because I tell you this, and I'll, I'll encourage you and I'll close. If you look back at that scripture that I read to you earlier, a part of that scripture gave some encouragement. And it said this. Let me go back and get it. It was talking about Samson. And verse number 22 said this. How be it the hair of his head began to grow again after he was shaven. So what am I saying? We're going to miss it sometime, yeah. Because sometimes the well is dry. Obviously, it's not enough rain. So will we be dry sometime? Yeah, absolutely. Do we want to? Absolutely not. But it happens. But God's grace is sufficient for us. So we don't have to be dry. We don't have to be without water. We can overflow with obedience. As long as we're watchful, as long as we're being mindful, and we know that the enemy swarms around seeking to destroy us. But if God is reaching inside of us, that means it's already there and we're already equipped. So I don't care what it is that you are dealing with right now. God can reach down in there anyway and pull out what he needs. Because you're equipped. Why? Because a dry well benefits no one. Amen. Amen. I pray that you receive something today. Uh, it was really on my heart because of where we are in the earth. God needs bold Christians. He needs us not to be afraid because it will come a time when we say, God, and they coming after us. They coming. Our voice has to be louder than social media. Our voice has to be louder than anything that's come across those airways. I don't need to see stuff about saging. I need to see stuff about praying. I don't need to see sage. I need to see oil. God's people must saturate these social media channels of communication. That starts with us. It starts with us. October 31st is coming. How are we going to posture up? How are we posting up? So a lot of stuff takes place in Birmingham. We need to be bold and ready. Why? Because a dry well benefits no one. And I speak an increase of water over your life. Amen? Let us pray. Father God, we thank you right now for the word. We thank you for it coming forth. And Lord, I want to speak right now in the name of Jesus. I speak over every well, every well that is in this church right now by the sound of my voice. 
that the anointing of God permeates the atmosphere, that the word of God pours into the vessel and fills the vessel up, that the water oozes out of their pores, that it oozes out of their mouths, that it, 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 it just follows them everywhere that they go. Wherever they go, the water, the streams will follow them in the name of Jesus. And whenever you need them, God, they will be ready they will be willing, they will be without hesitation, they will be without fear, they will be without uh, 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 being uh, uh, heavy laden, they will be in place and they will be ready to do what you called them to do. And if there's any situation, God, that puts them in a place much like Samson, we cast down, we break up, and we snatch out the spirit of Delilah out of their lives in the name of Jesus. They will go forth and they will have every strand on their head spiritually in the name of Jesus and never be without power, your spiritual power. So Father God, we praise you. We give you all the glory and honor. In your name we pray, amen, and praise God. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. So the uh, invitation was already given earlier um, by Minister Yvonne, so we won't uh, do that again. If you're watching us on live stream or replay, give us a follow on our social media platforms, Facebook and Instagram at Empowerment Word Church. Be sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Empowerment Word Church on YouTube. There you will find all the sermons and teachings from EWC Weekly. While watching, hit the thumbs up icon. As always, be empowered to change the world and we'll see you next week.